Hello, I'm Master Andrew Trento, and this is The Marshall Way. This is our third episode this month, and I'm very excited to be talking about today's topic because it is on Taekwondo. Taekwondo. I love Taekwondo. I started Taekwondo 16 years ago. I have some fantastic mentors uh, in Taekwondo, some 7th degree, some 5th degree, some 6th degree black belts. And it's not always about the rank, because some people forget, uh, they mix up rank with power, don't you know? But the truest martial artists I find are the ones who come from a place of spirit and not ego. Taekwondo, what we know it as today, was uh, I guess official in 1955. Many people consider um, General Pong Hee Choi, General Choi, as the founder of Taekwondo. Now back in the day, there was no Taekwondo. There was a Korean martial arts, but it, in the early part of the 20th century, Korea was under Japanese rule. You were not allowed to learn a fighting art. You would actually be executed if you were caught doing a fighting art or linked to it in any way. They would kill you. Once the Japan-Korea merger fell and Korea had its own independence movement, there were several independent Korean martial arts created called the Kwans. People who founded the Kwans were considered uh, the big stars. They'd rise up to the stardom. And um, there was Odo Kwan, which was created by General Choi, uh, Kukmu Kwan, Changdo Kwan. You know, they're all Kwans. There was one uh, earlier uh, martial art called Taekyeon, which was known for its fierce leg abilities and kicking techniques. And the Korea, uh, Korean War broke out in 1950. That was June, I think, 25th, 1950. And a few years later, that is when the general, General Choi, wanted to bring martial arts into the military. And General Choi created or founded Taekwondo. And he founded the International Taekwondo Federation, also known as ITF. Any traditional martial arts or a traditional Taekwondo practitioner is considered studying ITF style. The ITF um, kind of dispersed into three different organizations when General Choi died in 2002, I think he passed away. Each one claimed to be the original, so it's very chaotic. The traditional forms are you know, scarcely still taught. If you can find a good ITF school who still teaches the traditional Chanji, Dangun, Dosan forms, patterns. And it had a lot of a Japanese style because General Choi also studied Shotokan Karate. In 1973, the World Taekwondo Federation was founded, also known as the WTF, which is mostly known for its Olympic style of sport Taekwondo. They created their own set of forms. I think the Palgway forms was first, and then there was the Tegu forms. There's a lot of opinions about the differences of the Taekwondo forms that are taught today. Most, I think, do the Tegu forms, but there are some organizations that keep the Palgoy alive as well as the ITF forms alive. The Kuk Iwan is the headquarters for the World Taekwondo Federation in South Korea, Seoul, Korea. I believe seven, or I think seven of the Kwans came together to form the Kuk Iwan for Taekwondo. Only a few chose not to, very few. One of them, which is very popular today, linked with the Korean art of Tang Sudo, which is Mudu Kwan. Taekwondo was a demonstration sport for the Olympics in the early 80s. Some of the biggest Taekwondo athletes emerged during this time, such as Herb Perez and Juan Moreno. But it wasn't official until the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia where Steven Lopez was the first American to win a gold medal for Taekwondo for the United States. He again won a gold medal in the 2004 Athens game, as well as Nia Abdallah, who she uh, was our first woman in the Olympics who won silver. And they, the Lopez family all compete. There was another games in the 2008 Beijing games, and they again went in 2012 I don't know if they're planning on going to the 2016 Rio Brazil Games. Taekwondo has been signed on for uh, to continue with the Olympics, but the Olympic style uh, has been really pushed over the years and is very popular. 
one because it's, again, just because it's an Olympic sport. There are some Taekwondo practitioners who believe that the art aspect of Taekwondo has been lost because of the athleticism that has come with the new Olympic style. Some do a great job on keeping it alive, but some specialize in just sport Taekwondo. They are athletes and coaches, just like in any other sport, baseball or football or basketball. But what it is excellent in is the amount of conditioning that you would do in any other sport. The leg work, the endurance, the stamina, the crunches, the ab work. And Taekwondo is dominant in its kicking abilities. There are some Taekwondo practitioners whose kicks are deadly. They can kick 60 miles per hour if they wanted to. It is known for its roundhouse kicks, its spinning hook kicks, and these guys are no joke. They can do a hook kick and they'll knock you out, you're on the floor. The rules have developed quite a bit over the years. They're always trying to innovate and improve and change. Um, today, there is even electronic scoring system as they keep up with today's technology. The ITF still runs its own tournaments, but the WTF is very popular, even starting its own Pumze or Forms World Competitions. There are international tournaments throughout the world. There are national tournaments in each country, but they're always innovating to the sport. Taekwondo is great for young kids. Taekwondo is a great confidence booster. They learn to move, they learn to exercise, excellent exercise. The Forms help with their memory, learning the patterns and the focus it takes. Taekwondo is also a lot of fun to watch. I happen to be part of the AAU Taekwondo. I've competed for many years since I was 13 years old. I've coached for several years and I'm beginning to officiate. I've come officiated for the last couple of years and you always learn no matter what the role is, but you have to always keep up with the times. And some organizations like the AAU do a great job. What I love about the AAU Taekwondo program is that it also keeps the ITF style very much alive. It's the only place I've seen the ITF forms. You can find almost a Taekwondo school at every corner of your town nowadays. It is such a popular sport, but if you really do your research, you'll find a good Taekwondo school that will have the principles of the five tenets of Taekwondo. Respect, courtesy, integrity, indomitable spirit, and self-control. Those are the values of Taekwondo that are always taught, regardless. Besides the athletic part of sport Taekwondo, the values of traditional Taekwondo also stay very much alive. It is a fantastic sport. It has a great, tremendous history. I believe it is, according to um, the Travel Channel, they did the top 10 martial arts, and Taekwondo is the most popular martial art in the United States, at least. Of course, it is in Korea as well. The highest honor, from what I understand, the highest certification of a black belt you can receive is the Kukiwan Certificate from Seoul, Korea. The history of Taekwondo is always enhancing and it's done so much in a short amount of time. Like I said, only since the 1950s has Taekwondo been created and the WTF only since the 1970s. And now in Olympic sport, there's no stopping the art. There are some people who are still around who really were some pioneers in its beginning stages. There are martial artists known as Jun Ri, known as the father of American Taekwondo. There is Grandmaster Richard Chun, the founder of the United States Taekwondo Association. Um, the AAU president, Mike Friello, is one of the highest uh, ranks, eighth degree black belt in the United States, an American, mind you. Ji Ho Choi. Uh, Grandmaster Jiho Choi is the president of the whole North American Association, the Pan Am, uh, the Pan Am organization. And the Taekwondo Hall of Fame is right here in Teaneck, New Jersey, believe it or not. I know. And some of the greatest athletes have come from Taekwondo, such as Steven Lopez, Herb Perez, there's Peter Baratos, Mark Williams, Anyone in Taekwondo knows these names, and there's always newer competitors coming up every day.
it is an honor to be a part of Taekwondo and sharing the tradition of it, the sport of it, the sportsmanship of it, and the spirit of Taekwondo. Like any martial art, Do means the way of life. All martial arts are a way of life. Taekwondo has been a way of my life for 16 years and will continue to do so. It's even a greater honor to work with some of the masters in Taekwondo that have been a part of its history. Next week, I'll be having my first Master Trento special here on the Marshall Way, where I'll be doing my exclusive interview with Great Grandmaster Su Chong Kang, one of the pioneers in the creation of Taekwondo and the, one of the pioneers of spreading Taekwondo here in the United States. I'll be visiting him and his son in Edison, New Jersey, where he stands now, and we'll be talking about some of the schools that he started, founded in 1970 that are still running today by his sons in New York, and also the, the times of the Japanese rule that he grew up in. We'll also be talking about his connections to General Choi himself and his involvement and the times when he was the vice president of the ITF itself. A lot of his students who were also pioneers in Taekwondo, it will be an honor to sit down with Grandmaster Kang. And I hope you join us next week on Friday for the first Master Trento special, Grandmaster Kang. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I'm Master Trento, and that's your Zen for the day. Thank you.